Welcome back to our tutorial on Vectorworks 2021 uh, drafting. Uh, this is part one of the tutorial, section two, which I believe starts on page six of your written tutorial. Uh, this is about setting borders and title blocks. Uh, it may seem a bit premature to be working in uh, setting up something that's usually considered finishing touches, but the whole idea is to create a template so you really only have to do this once, making minor changes from project to project and not having to reinvent the wheel every time. So it also gives us a chance to explore how Vectorworks works in layers as well. Uh, there are two types. They are design layers and sheet layers. So we already have our design layers that we explored in section one, theater floor plan, scenery, soft goods, lighting positions, and light plot. Those are where the drawing actually takes place. The other type is a sheet layer, and this is how the drawing gets laid out on a piece of paper uh, for printing and coming out of the plotter. If any of you are familiar with AutoCAD, uh, it's very similar to model space and paper space. And if you're not, don't worry about it because we're going to walk uh, through it step by step and hopefully it will make sense. So, since I'm already in my layer drop-down menu, uh, I am going to create a new sheet layer. So this dialog box will pop up. I'm going to leave the number as the default, SHT-1, but change the sheet title to FOH Light Plot. And click OK. And Vectorworks is going to automatically take me into that new sheet layer that I just created. And I'm going to do that one more time. New sheet layer. Again, leaving the default and changing the name to overhead light plot. And OK. So I've created two brand new sheet layers. Uh, I'm currently in the overhead light plot layer. <clears throat> uh, and now we can explore how we'll use uh, some of our uh, additional tool sets. So we talked about the basic tools in section one uh, and introduced a little bit of the additional tool sets. I'm in the lighting one right now. Uh, it's the one that I'll be in most of the time. However, for this particular thing, we want uh, this one down here, which is the dims notes or dimensions notes. If I click on that, it gives me all of these different tools that are largely associated with dimensioning a drawing or, or putting notes on a drawing. We're going to scroll down to the title block border. And we'll click that once. And when I hover over the drawing, it gives me uh, an outline of what it thinks it wants me to uh, insert into the drawing. Uh, don't click yet. We're going to change a couple of things first. We're going to come up here to Title Block Border Style and click on this menu. And this is going to open a version of our Resource Manager. We looked at that in Section 1 with the full thing up top. This opens the Resource Manager relative to the specific tool that's being used. Uh, if for some reason any of these are collapsed, uh, we can just click on the little gray triangle and open up that file tree. Uh, and this gives us all of the different uh, types of title blocks that Vectorworks knows how to reference. So we're going to choose Spotlight Title Blocks USITT. Uh, in that file, there are two symbols for a title block, and we're going to want the title block corner uh, for this uh, particular project. So I'm going to double click on that. It's going to select it. And now I have a new version of what it wants to insert. And that's what I want. So I'm going to click once. And it has inserted the border and uh, the title block. Uh, I'm going to go back to my selection tool, uh, which is the arrow uh, up here. So I can either click on that arrow to select it, or I can hit X on my keyboard, which is the shortcut. I would recommend getting used to that. You'll do it a lot, uh, and it's much easier to get back to uh, by the um, keyboard shortcut. <clears throat> so this title block's relatively boring. Uh, we want to um, change it, make it look a little bit more interesting. Uh, so we're going to zoom into things. You can zoom in a variety of ways. There is a zoom tool up here. 
Uh, it's got the little plus, uh, and there are a couple of different ways. Uh, there is the interactive, which means it will zoom in and out with a mouse click, or there's your typical marquee. Basically, you're drawing a marquee around something, and it'll zoom all the way into it. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for zoom is C, as in Charlie. Uh, that's usually the fastest way to get to it. Uh, also, you can zoom in and out by using the wheel in the center of the mouse, uh, which can be relatively handy. Uh, okay, so we're going to edit this border and title block a little bit. It's already highlighted, but I'm going to click on it uh, twice. And it gives me this box of edit title block and border. Uh, we are going to select the title block manager uh, for starters and click OK. Uh, here it may give you a warning that all of the title blocks will be um, affected. If it does, that's fine. Just say yes. Uh, I think I have that shut off because I was tired of seeing it pop up. Uh, but now we're in our title block manager uh, and how we can manipulate some of the information that's, um, that's in there. In the left-hand column, we want to make sure that project data is... Um, selected so that we're in that section and for right now we're going to change the project name to oh yes there's the message yes we will affect all of them and no we don't care uh title block or sorry title of show this is just going to be a default uh you would come in and change this for each individual project that you were working on so uh, last semester it might have been the crucible this semester it might be intimate apparel or the wedding singer uh, depending on uh, what you want to change so uh, we've changed that we're going to click ok and we can say see down here that we have changed that to title of show <clears throat> all right there's a couple other things that we're going to um, to want to change. Uh, so I'm going to double click on this again in my manager. And so we've got title of show. I'm going to click next and it gives us uh, a second um, a second page of options. So this is where we would enter the venue, your event location. We're just going to call this. Yes, we know all of them will be changed. Thank you very much. We're going to change this to generic theater. Uh, this would be where you put in the title of the theater. So we might say uh, Vivia Lock Theater uh, in, in this instance uh, relative to um, our space at OSU. All right, a couple of the things that we want to change. Uh, we're going to go um, into sheet data. Okay, uh, its sheet title is overhead light plot. Of course, that's what we changed it to when we created it initially. Our sheet number is the default two that we um, left from the beginning. Uh, this also gives us our, uh, our page number. Our sheet number itself, uh, we're gonna say is gonna be two. Um, we had that as the default, but if it if we leave it as the default, it's going to print that information. So we're just going to change it so it prints the number two. Uh, our date is uh, today's date, uh, which is great. Our scale is going to need to be updated. So this hat wants it to be one to one, which is full scale. Um, we're going to say we want it to be one half inch equals one foot zero inches to reference the correct scale that we're going to have. Uh, we'll click Next. Designed by, this is where you enter your name. So I will enter mine. And directed by whoever we uh, is our director for this particular project. So we're gonna call them somebody creative. All right, so that's all done now, and we'll click OK. And we'll see all of that information updated 
uh, in our new title block. Okay, uh, a couple more things that we're gonna change. We're gonna double click on this again, uh, but this time we're going to choose title block layout. Uh, this is where you can actually edit the size and shape uh, of the title block itself. We'll click OK. Uh, again, it's going to tell us that everything is going to be affected. That's fine. We'll say OK. And now we've entered into the title block layout editor. Uh, so we want to start by changing the text. So if I hover over them, it'll give me an orange rectangle telling me that that is uh, what will be affected uh, should I click on it. So I'm going to click on all of these by clicking the first one and holding shift and clicking each of the additional pieces of text. So that they are all highlighted. Great. And now I'm going to hover over the ob object info palette uh, up at the top, uh, and that's going to open up. And I want to change the font because I don't like this font very much. So here are all of the different fonts that we can reference. I'm going to come down to Graphite MM because it's my preferred font that I like to use. And then once that's all changed, we can just click an empty space and it will deselect all of that. Uh, and that will um, update all of that. Okay, so next we're gonna look at the border and adjusting the size of the border of our title block, which is this exterior rectangle. I'll click on that once to highlight it. Here are the different little control points that we set up in the preferences originally. Uh, so we're going to go up again to the object info palette, and I'm going to select the lower right hand origin point right here. That's where I want to be referencing all of the information that I'm going to put in from. So I'm going to go up to my width and I'm going to change the width to 10 and 3 quarters. And then I'm going to change my height to three and five eighths. Great. Whoops. Five eighths. Great. And now you can see that the border itself uh, has already changed uh, in uh, in size. <clears throat> All right, and then I can again and click an empty space and it will deselect uh, all of that. Uh, from time to time, you may need to navigate around the page. We talked about zooming in and out uh, a little bit. There is also a pan tool. It is this hand up here. You can see that the keyboard shortcut is H, uh, which is also very handy to just click. And now I can have this hand and I can move around my page. Uh, however, the easiest way to do it is by pressing the space bar and it will do it temporarily. So if I hold the space bar down and move and let it up, then it stops. Uh, the final way is clicking the center mouse button. Um, the, if you click down on the wheel, it will temporarily give you the pan tool as well. All right, so we're going to keep uh, editing through some of this. We're still in our title block layout editor. Uh, so we're going to start working with some of the basic tools. We're going to choose the line, which is right here. Its keyboard shortcut is the number two uh, to create a new line. And uh, we're going to hover in on the lower left hand part of the line underneath revisions and you're going to see that I get a red box and a note that says endpoint. These are the smart points of Vectorworks. It basically means that ref uh, Vectorworks is going to reference off of that specific point. 
uh, for what it is that you're doing. So anytime that you have a red box highlighted like that, it's going to try and reference that point. So I'm creating a new line. I want to reference that point, but I want to start my line down on the border. So you can see that uh, I've got a green dashed line coming down from the red square, which is saying Vectorworks is referencing that specific point in the drawing, and I am horizontally, um, I, I'm aligning horizontally to that uh, with the object that I've selected. Uh, if I was to go back up, it would do the same thing. But I want to start here, and I'm going to come all the way up to Object Vertical. Uh, if you want, you can hold down the Shift key, and that will lock, um, it'll lock Vectorworks to specific angles. Uh, if you don't, you can kind of create whatever angle you want. Uh, but we're going to say we want it to go vertical right here. And we'll click again, and now we've added a new line uh, into what we want to do. Uh, but I think I took that one too far. So I'll delete it and uh, try this one more time. So I'm going to hit 2 uh, to get your line. <laughs> And again, I'm going to grab that smart point, come down to the border, click once, holding shift all the way up to this line, and then I'll click, and there's the line that I definitely want to have uh, inserted. So now I need to make this line be the same thickness as, uh, as everything else. So we talked about that in the attributes palette uh, before. Uh, so I'm going to come over here to my line weight drop down menu and I'm going to choose uh, 28. Boom, and now we can see that that line uh, has increased uh, in, its, uh, in its thickness. All right, next one that we're going to do is the connect combine tool uh, over in the basic tool set. Uh, it's right here. Apparently it's keyboard shortcut is option L. I've never used that. I usually just click on the icon um, for when I need to do this. So I'm going to click on that once. And I'm going to grab this line underneath project name. It's going to highlight it in red and I'll click on it. And then I get this line and I'm going to bring it straight over to this border. And then it's going to be highlighted in red and I will click again and it's going to extend that line all the way across to the edge of that title block. Uh, so I'm done doing that. I'm going to hit the X key to get back to my selection uh, just so that I don't manipulate anything that, um, that I'm not supposed to. Uh, so then now I'm going to take this bit of text and move it so that it's centered more uh, in the box. So again, I'm going to select this, and if I come to the middle of it, I get a smart point called insertion point. Uh, every object will have that. It's literally the where Vectorworks is inserting that specific object. So on a lighting fixture, it's usually right in the middle of the light where we would hang it uh, from the pipe. Uh, from this piece of text, it's in the center of it, which uh, is exactly what we want. So I'm going to grab that, I'm going to click it and drag, and if I come up to the top, I get a smart point that says top center. Okay, So now it's going to reference that point, but I want to move this text horizontally. So I'm still holding down my mouse button, and I'm going to hit shift, and now we can see that it's moving exactly horizontally uh, to that point in the top center of the border. I'll let go, and there it is, and we've moved the project name to uh, the center of the title block. <clears throat> Great, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, import an image. In this case, it's going to be our logo. Um, I frequently use uh, the OSU logo, but if you were working on a larger commercial project, uh, you may insert the logo of the company that you're working for or the specific show. Um, that uh, 
that the drawing is for. But either way, it's a good thing to go through. So we're going to come up here to File, Import, Image File. Okay. And I am going to get out of this. Uh, oh, we're already referencing my OSU files. Right here is my OSU logo uh, that is on Canvas for you guys. I also believe that I put it on the thumb drives before I gave them to you at the beginning of the semester, so you should have it. So I'm going to click on that and say Open. And this is where it gives me some options. Um, most of the time we're not going to deal with this very much, although our compression method is going to be PNG, uh, only because it's going to be a, a smaller file size, not that 29K is all that big, um, but it can be as compressed as it wants because it's going to print relatively small. So we'll say PNG and then click OK, and boom, there uh, it inserts uh, our logo. All right, so now I'm going to move this into place. Again, uh, it's going to give me a smart point of center, which is, means I'm in the exact center of uh, this object. And I'm going to put it into this little section that we just created. So I've clicked and I'm dragging. I'm still holding my mouse key down. And I'm going to find uh, the center of this box. Ah, yes. So I'm going to grab the center. I'm going to acquire a smart point at this endpoint. I'm going to come over and acquire another smart point at this point. And then this one will give me the middle of those two points. So I can grab this one more time, and I can do the same thing over here. Endpoint, bottom left. Uh, there's the, well, I had it. There's the midpoint. Well, this is a good point. If you get too many of these, you can get rid of them and try again. So we're going to here, endpoint endpoint, midpoint, great, grab that again, endpoint, bottom left, midpoint, and I want to reference that, so I'm holding the shift key, bringing it straight down vertical, letting go, now we're in the center of the box. So sometimes it takes a little bit of manipulation, uh, but will uh, ultimately let, help you uh, put things where you want them to be. So that's pretty well set. I've got all of the information. I've updated my font. I've manipulated the size and shape of my title block. I've inserted a logo. Uh, that's looking much more interesting than what we started, so I think I'm done. Uh, so I'm going to get exit out of this editor by clicking this button up here, Exit Title Block Layout. Okay. And now it's updated it with all of the information. I have title of show. This is the overhead light plot in the generic theater. Our director is somebody creative. I am the designer. Uh, this is the date the document was created, the scale that it's in, uh, and it's drawing two of one, which we're going to need to adjust uh, in a minute. So this is on the overhead light plot layer. If I select up here and I go to the uh, FOH light plot, I still need a title block for this one. So I'm going to go back to my title block border tool, select that, uh, and because I've manipulated the title block already once, I can place it and all of that information is still there. Uh, you'll see that it automatically updates the drawing title with um, FOH light plot, uh, which is good. It doesn't have this information, however, because that actually still needs to be updated. So we're going to double click again. Uh, we're going to go into uh, Title Block Manager once more and click OK. Great, and we want to be in the uh, sheet data. 
so we've got our scale, which is now correct. This sheet number is going to be one. Uh, we've got our design by, we've got our directed by, that's great. Uh, well, let's look at the project data real quick. We still have title of show. We still have our generic theater. So let's click OK. And it didn't update. Interesting. All right. Well, let's do this one more time. We'll go in. Let's go to settings to sheet, uh, sheet data and click OK. It's another way of getting into essentially the same menu. There we go. And now we can actually see what we're looking at a little bit better. So we're going to say our scale is going to be one half inch equals one foot zero inches. Uh, our sheet number is going to be one. Um, we have today's date. Great. We don't need to worry about this. We've updated that. Uh, this is going to be designed by me again. And our director is still somebody creative. Uh, okay, if I click on this little box, it'll actually zoom in and I can see a little bit better of how this is going to look, which looks more correct. So now I'm going to click OK. And almost all of our information has been updated. For some reason, it's still not doing our sheet layer properly. So let's look at that. Ah, our sheet number should be one. Okay. Well, that's annoying. This might be our problem. Going into the overhead light plot layer. OK, this sheet, uh, sheet number is actually going to be 2, because our front of house is going to be our first page. Our overhead is going to be our second page. So we'll say OK. It'll change that to 2. Great. And then we'll go back to front of house, do the same thing. OK. <laughs> And change this to one. Okay, great. Uh, so basically it was getting conflicting information because of how we had entered it the first time. So uh, there might be a little stumbling block here or there, but uh, there's always a way to, um, to fix that. So uh, we've got our title block and our border uh, all squared away, which is great. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and I'll ultimately save this as a template. Um, so I'm going to click up here to this icon, which is uh, fit to page area, which if I click on that, Vectorworks will zoom out. And this is the entire size of the page that I would be printing on. I'm ready to save this. So I'm going to go File, Save As, uh, and oops, I did the wrong thing. Uh, file save as template is what I'm looking for. Okay, and this is going to put it in the um, default templates. I'm going to actually change that and put it in my folder. You can put it on your hard drive. Um, and we're going to save this as your initials and VW template. So I'm going to say TCR VW template. 
and save. And so I've saved that and I can reference that template uh, anytime I want. Uh, that's the end of section two of part one of this tutorial. Uh, so there'll be another video on section three.